today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Play Imaginative Super Alloy Iron Man 3 Iron Patriot one quarter scale figure. Just to kind of give you guys a gauge of how big this box is, there's the bottom of it there. One quarter scale, and we move the camera all the way up. There's the top of it right there, way past, or almost past, spot backdrop there. Uh, the box itself, before we open up the piece, the box is as impressive as the unit that's going to be inside. The front has Iron Man 3 in a metal placard that's over top of the box. Iron Patriot, one quarter scale collectible figure. And of course, the obvious thing, you have this really cool uh, artwork here on the front of uh, James Rhodes as, of course, Iron Patriot. You can go to www.playimaginative.com and you can also head over to www.superalloyfigure.com if you want to check out the other pieces that they're produced. Uh, this is actually now the second piece the spots reviewed uh, from the quarter scale. The first one being War Machine, and to some really extent, this is essentially just a repaint of the original War Machine that we had to look at. But uh, still, very, very excited to get this guy out of packaging. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. But when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the one quarter scale collectible figure of Iron Patriot. There's more heading away, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Before we get a better look at the Iron Patriot, the display stand that comes with the Iron Patriot is the same as that the one that came with the one quarter scale war machine. Very large unit, kind of just to gauge really how big this piece is going to be. And that still features the circular lights that are going to light up around the outer perimeter of the base. And there's a front area that's going to hold the placard, and I'll show you guys that in a second. There's a hole at the back that's going to hold the clear post, but before we do really anything else, flip the base upside down, I want to take the battery compartment off. The batteries required for this to light up are three AAA batteries. Unfortunately, uh, AAA batteries are not included with this, but so we'll have to add that ourselves. Now that you've put some fresh batteries in the base, flip it around to the back here, and there's a switch right here. Turn the switch on and the whole section here will light up a bright white LED light. You'll see here that there's a section that isn't, um, isn't well, it's lighting up, but there's not, nothing in there just yet. Well, I'll reach over and grab the placard card. The placard card, which funny enough, actually says Iron Man 3 War Machine Mark II and not so much Iron Patriot, but you can take that, plug that into the base like so, and then this area will also light up the outer parameter by the lights that are inside the base. It's a really nice bright effect and uh, something again that carried over from the original War Machine. Then take the clear rod that's in also included and you wanna just push that into the back hole of the base. You wanna turn it a little bit because I find it you have to apply a little bit of pressure to get that completely affixed inside the base. Also like the quarter scale war machine, the uh, Iron Patriot also comes with the waist clip. Just wanna unscrew the end like that and slide that onto the clear post. Then add your Iron Patriot and you've instantly got yourself a spectacular display piece. Now again, you can see how much this piece towers, factoring in that the figure itself is 18 inches in height. When you start adding stuff like the base, you're putting this at roughly almost at about 20 inches high. That's a considerably tall piece and something that will look impressive on a display shelf. Now getting a better look at the Iron Patriot, one thing that could be said about this piece is he is heavy. Uh, he is comprised basically at 80% metal. That adds up to a pretty considerably heavy piece. Adding also to the fact that he's 18 inches in height, you've got yourself a piece that, uh, well, it's probably one of the heaviest pieces that I've had in my collection. Now to say though, he is uh, once again a repaint essentially from the uh, one quarter scale uh, war machine. So what I'll do is I'll put, I'll just move Iron Patriot just to the side like that. And I'll bring in the uh, the Mark II War Machine, also from the one quarter scale play imaginative super alloy line. So really you can see that between the two, there's not really much difference between the pieces. They're all essentially the same frame. The only difference is of course the different paint schemes between the two. Uh, traditional uh, and purist will probably go gravitate towards more of the War Machine because he is of the original color. War Machine more the patriotic color featured from of course Iron Man 3. The one thing you'll also probably notice is that the War Machine Mark II, I've got the shoulder cannon added to the shoulder 
of that figure. The Iron Patriot currently doesn't have a shoulder cannon, but rest assured he does come with one. So one thing I was mentioning earlier, uh, the Iron Patriot is comprised of 80% metal, 80% uh, metal alloy making up this piece. Uh, the figure itself has showroom quality gloss and matte metallic paints. It also has a protective surface too. So if you are worried like the metallic paints on the surface of the piece are gonna scratch or chip off, the, the coat that they put over top of it will protect the paint from chipping off. The coloring of the piece gives you a very vibrant red, silver, and blue treatment. And I do like the blue that they went with too. It's not a very stark primary blue. Instead, it's more almost like a blue graced, a uh, gray based blue color. Um, but the paint is very clean. I have no issues at all with the paint on the overall piece. And just flipping around to the side here, you can see really some of the details in the figure itself. Uh, the stars on these, the backs of the arms, the areas on his torso that say danger. And uh, we've also got stars and uh, stars, almost stripes on his waist area as well. Uh, detail actually is very immaculate on the piece. And uh, I don't even know if the camera's gonna do it justice, but like even like the smallest areas of the front are labeled here. We've got danger on the torso sections here. On the side of his torso at the top, we've got Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes, uh, FFAF04445 on his shoulder, and once again, some of these star treatments on his forearm area. Now, if your matter of preference is to have uh, the Iron Pager here with his dome helmet on, you can do that, or what you can also do too, the folks over at Play Imaginative also give you a Don Cheadle replacement head. Once again, like the original War Machine, it just pegs out of place using the ball joint supplied underneath. For comparison, there is the Iron Patriot alternate head, and there is the War Machine alternate head. It's roughly really about the same head. I noticed the alternate head for uh, the Iron Patriot, Don Cheadle's face is a little further up on the helmet here. Whereas this one here was a little bit further down. And I thought initially that it was, that the face wasn't as high up and it might be the reasoning for it, but this one definitely sticks further up. Uh, Don Cheadle's alternate face here also has a closed mouth, whereas the Iron Patriot version of him has the open mouth with some teeth exposed as well. Now this piece too is also hand painted. The same thing could be said for the uh, the War Machine version of the one quarter scale, both pieces were hand painted. Uh, really immaculate pieces. And though I'm not too crazy with ever displaying the War Machines or for that matter, Iron Patriot and War Machine with the, uh, the unmasked helmet, I do always love when you get that included from a toy company. Also like the War Machine, the alternate Don Cheadle uh, face uh, also comes with the uh, face guard that you can put over the front. So if you don't necessarily want the light up options of the the Iron Patriot that he has in the, the head that's on there, you could just theoretically have the Don Cheadle face on there and just keep the, the face plate over top. It won't light up granted, no, but you can still at any point then take the plates off and you can still see Don Cheadle's face. And also this plate has not only detail on the inside, but magnets on the top that you can stick it to the top, the top of the alternate face too. Great way to display the piece. So even though I probably won't end up displaying him with the eyes lighting up anyways, I could ultimately just display him with this face. And then at any given point, I can raise the visor up with the magnets and have Don Cheadle's face or uh, James Rhodes face visible. Of course, as well, because he is a retooled version of War Machine, you are definitely going to still get an, a shoulder-mounted cannon. The cannon has articulation points, uh, a swivel, actually swivel point at the bottom, a swivel point here, a swivel point at the top, and it also hinges. Some of the details, even on the barrel, you've got danger, uh, laser radiation featured underneath there. And also to answer your question, you can press the back like so, and the... Yes, the shoulder cannon also lights up a very bright orange. To get it on the Iron Patriot, we're just gonna spin him around like that. It's really not an easy task for how big he is. We'll bring the camera up here. There we go. 
and we're going to take this and because it's rectangular if you guys can see it right there you're going to want to put it in uh, facing up you want to make sure it's facing this way not this way and there's grooves there are grooves right at the top here that carry all the way around and you can take that and plug it into the back section the back section of his uh, back armor plate the shoulder cannon definitely gives it a more complete look and I think really for a B9 Patriot you gotta have the shoulder cannon featured on the back now if you don't want it sticking straight out you can also take the cannon and bend it back um, in a more uh, retracted position Iron Patriot features light up eyes, light up arc reactor, light up hands and light up soles of his feet First things first, to change the lights or to activate the lights on his face, you're gonna reach up to the top here and pull the face plate off. It's not always easy to get your finger in there, but you can just pop that plate off from the front. Once you have the visor off, there's a little plastic tab that sits inside the battery compartment. But once that's out, you can turn the switch on and you'll see that Iron Patriot's eyes will light up. For its chest, it's actually a little bit easier. You're going to spin the figure around like that. And the back section here has an on-off switch. The other flap has the battery compartment inside. And once again, you'll have to take the plastic tab out. But from there, you'll switch the switch to on here. Fold those flaps down. And you've got him with the light-up arc reactor. For his arm activation, take the back bicep plates off like that and there's a section for the batteries once again turn the switch on like that and take the other back plate off the plates can be a little harder to get to once again pull the tab out and switch that over to on now you're not going to see it necessarily right away because the default arms default hands on war machine or iron patriot right now are the closed fists but we'll fix that soon enough Excluding the hands that currently are on Iron Patriot, Iron Patriot also comes with an extra seven hands. Those hands range from partially open hands that still show the, uh, the repulsor blast, a pair of flat palms or open hands, one saluting hand, and a pair of flat hands with articulated fingers. And the articulation is in two points in each finger and two points, including a ball joint in the thumb. So what we can do is wiggle the hand and just pop it off of the socket. It's a little bit of a larger ball socket too, so you have to be careful when popping it off. You see that the light is already on there, and then we're gonna take the hand that we wanna change it to. In this case, let's use the articulated hands, and we're gonna rotate them again to pop them back onto the ball socket. The complete overall look with all the lights lit up. You have the arc reactor, the helmeted eyes light up, and the repulsor blast give you a really great way to display the piece. But above and beyond that, uh, Iron Patriot also has uh, lights on the undersides of his feet. Now to accomplish this, this is not necessarily the hardest to get to, but because he, of course he is a little heavier. On the undersides of his feet, there's an on and off switch. Just switch that to on. Switches to on, and immediately he's got repulsors on the undersides of his feet. It's something that you may not necessarily see when you have them displayed, but an added touch that I really appreciate. Other things that will also come with the Iron Patriot are a series of damaged interchangeable parts. So as you've seen, the Iron Patriot has a regular domed helmet, but you can easily swap it out for a more battle-damaged, battle-scarred faceplate. That damaged look also carries over to damaged chest plate, uh, damaged shoulder pad area here, and a couple of damaged leg pieces. And really nice touches on the paintwork too. Uh, it's a little lighter around the areas where the metal would have been scratched and more of a burnt look around it. Uh, the Iron Patriot certainly has been in some serious uh, battle. Spot couldn't really leave these guys out either. You've got a couple of bicep plates too, also with that battle damaged look. So you can get essentially the Iron Patriot looking from this to something that looks like this. And this is really a great way to display the piece too. Um, the 
thigh pieces, probably a little hardest to, to take because all of these pieces can be removed by magnets. The thigh pieces though, when you take them off, you take them off and then they're also pegged. Let's see if I can actually take one off here to show you guys. These you actually pop off like that. Now there's a magnet, but there's also little peg points on the undersides or at the bottom of the thigh plates too. So they're a little harder to get on. The rest of the armor though, like the chest piece, just take this off. This comes off with just magnets. There's magnets at the tops as well as on the sides. That easily snaps into place. And then the bicep pieces are probably the easiest. They're just magnetized, so they just stick into place. But a uh, little mixing, a little matching, and you get yourself a more damaged looking Iron Patriot. One of the last features to point out is probably the uh, the retractable guns on the sides of his arm. Now these also carried over from the uh, War Machine Mark II, and they're just spring activated. So you push down on them, these pop up. And then there's like a little nozzle. And actually the nozzle I've still got in the bag, but it's just a little black nozzle that goes on the end there. Guaranteed to probably be lost, but you can plug that into the end there and he's got like a little arm cannon. He's also got a magazine clip that just pulls out from the bottom here. It's a little trickier to get to. And this section right here can pop right off and you've got a little ammo clip magazine that just slides on the underside of his arm. Again, it's a little harder to get it that in there. It seems like it's a little bit of a stiffer area to put in versus uh, the war machine. I think the war machine was a little easier to pull these clips out, but uh, Iron Patriot also has that. Looking at the articulation on the Iron Patriot, he has the same ball joint that the War Machine had. In fact, really, the articulation will be the exact same as the uh, the War Machine Mark II, but he has a ball joint socket, and he actually has two. He has a ball joint socket at the base of the neck. He also has a ball joint socket that sits into the cavity of the head. But then he's also got a hinge point in the neck area itself. Shoulders work on a really flexible ball joint, and uh, they rotate. These are shoulder pad areas too are also spring activated so when you start moving the arm up too much the shoulder pads all automatically start moving out of the way via a spring a spring that's on the shoulder pad area the biceps do slightly swivel not too much though he's got a uh, double bend at the elbow area here and as we've already looked at he's got a rotation via the ball joint in his wrists his torso is pretty flexible as well it, uh, there's a couple of articulation plates here. It bends here, and you'll probably see that a couple of times when Spot's been moving things, there's a little plastic. They've actually put plastic on some of the pieces that would be prone to rubbing up against one another so that the paint won't scrape off. So you see like there's plastic here. Uh, it is supposed to be there. It's just to protect the paint surface. But he does have a articulation point here, right basically at the uh, top torso section here. And then he's got a second hinge section here, probably right, you see right where my finger, where my thumb is, there's an, a secondary hinge there. Uh, he doesn't have any sort of waist swivel, uh, not really from the standpoint of being able to rotate at him at the waist, but uh, yeah, he's still got a good bit of movement in the torso section. With regards to his legs, his legs do, uh, do slightly swivel. Um, these little plates will also move out of the way too. You can move those freely out of the way and the legs will allow you to move them forward like that and back and also out. He has, as mentioned, that little swivel in the thigh and a little, some, some of the joints will squeak when you move them uh, just because uh, like you've got that little plastic covering underneath that's preventing the, uh, the metal from scraping one another. Uh, when it comes to his knees, his knees are on a nice double hinge joint. Uh, he has no swivel really in the calf area and then he's got a hinge foot, but the foot, when you rotate it, it uh, it's a little limited in this area here, but he has quite a bit of movement in the toe area. So you can kind of have the toe kind of crouched forward as if he's propelling himself. The Iron Patriot really took everything I love so much about the War Machine Mark II and elevated it with this fantastic Patriot-inspired metallic color scheme. The reds, the blues, and the silvers work extremely well and elevate a mold that I already liked so much when it came to War Machine Mark II. Um, the pieces themselves share really similar components, share similar accessories, 
But the sell for this guy is the coloring. The coloring really brings all the things, again, I like so much about him to this guy here. Being that these are also one quarter scale pieces and because 80% of them are featuring the die cast metal, they're a little more expensive than a conventional six scale figure. Personally, I think it's worth it, but again, they're gonna be a little bit more expensive than what you would normally pay for six scale collectibles. That being said though, you're, if you're a fan of the War Machine and you're a fan of Iron Patriot and you're really a fan of high-end collectibles, these are great pieces that you want to add to your collection. Today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the play imaginative uh, Iron Man, and actually this was the Iron Man 3. We're looking at the War Machine Mark II repaint Iron Patriot. Stay tuned guys, Spot's going to have more videos heading your way. Thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you guys next time.